Hello and welcome to this video on geometric progressions. This is on the right and the left hand side here you'll just see sort of um, your three formulas for geometric progressions. Uh, as far as I know, I, I know that definitely the sum formulas are in the uh, formula booklet that you get given. I'm not sure about this one here but it's fairly simple. Um, this is just for finding a certain term in a sequence. Say you want the fifth term in the sequence, the so U5 will be A, the first term, A stands for the first term, R, the common ratio. The common ratio is a constant which you multiply each term by to get the next term. And then you have this N which we said was 5 and 5 minus 1. So the fifth term would be AR to the power of 4. Alright, the sum. This is basically the sum of the first n terms and just a tip here this can sort of get quite confusing and um, this is how it's given in the formula booklet but I'd sort of add another bracket there and there and there because when writing all of it into your calculator it can get a bit messy that's why you need to use brackets to make sure you're doing actually calculating the right uh, numbers and this is the sum to infinity now this only applies if R satisfies this region. If R is less than 1 but bigger than minus 1, then it has a sum to infinity. Um, sum to infinity means it converges to a limit. That's because if R is in this region, and you have, well, this is, you may understand this, you may not, but the limit, as n tends towards infinity, if r is less than 1, but bigger than minus 1, rn will tend towards 0, as n tends towards infinity. And that is why, in the end, you'll just be adding on zeros and zeros and zeros and zeros so the series converges to a limit and I'll talk more about that later but for now we'll just get on with an example just sort of pretty standard questions oh and oh, lastly say you're given <coughs> this is how normally terms are this is how a geometric series would look you'd have A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed so so until you get to ARN now minus one now say you want the say you've got A Right. Say you have a, and you want the, uh, you want to find r. A quick tip for finding r in a geometric series is that's term one, that's term two, that's term three, that's term four. Right. What? Well, any term with r in it divided by the term before will give you r. And what I mean by that is, say you have two divided by one is equal to, I don't mean 2 divided by 1, but in terms of what they represent, that gives you AR over A, which equals R. Same here, if you have 4 over 3, which equals AR cubed divided by AR squared, this gives you R as well. This is just a useful tip for finding R if you're given A, and you can carry on with the question. And here, you says the question is, the sixth term of a geometric progression is 16. And the third term is 2. Find the first term. And find the common ratio.
Now, you may think, I'm not giving enough here, but if we go to this bit up here in the top right, let's write these out in their sort of geometric form. 16 is equal to uh, AR to the power of 6. Is that 5? Sorry. And U3 2 is equal to AR squared. Right, so now you're given AR, you have AR to the power of 5 equals 16, and AR squared is equal to 2. Now, if you have divide 16 by 2, you get 16 over 2 is equal to AR5 over oh, divided by AR squared. Now, this is now the A and the A cancel out, and R2, when you divide indices, you subtract. When you decide, the when you divide numbers, with indices, you subtract the indices, so you have 5 minus 2, so you have r cubed, so therefore you get 8 equal to r cubed, r is equal to 2. Now, we found r, let's say, let's say a r squared, right, a r squared is equal to 2, that means r squared is 4, so 4 a is equal to 2, a is equal to a half. So we found the first term and we found the common ratio by using this trick up here where you sort of divide terms to sort of find the common ratio and then you just put it back into the um, information you've been given and then you can find a. Now, let's say we were asked to find the sum of the first eight terms of this sequence. So then we have sum first eight terms is equal to a, which is a half, multiplied by one minus uh, r is equal to two. Two, and we're after eight terms. One minus two to the power of eight. Divided by one minus two. All right. So in my calculator, I do firstly the inner bracket one minus two to the power of eight, giving me minus two hundred and fifty-five times a half, and then divide it by minus one, and that leaves me with one hundred and twenty-seven point five. I mean, once written out in the formula, they're fairly easy. You've just got to be careful using the brackets, when to use them, when not to use them, when calculating sums of geometric series. But, let's just say we have a, another sequence. Let's say we have another sequence. For instance, on a, a sum to infinity, we can have um, let's say the first term of a sequence is 8 and the second term, the fourth term of the sequence, sorry, is equal to 3.375. Now, let's say we're asked a question, find the common ratio of this sequence and determine with a reason whether it converges to a limit. If so, find the limit. These are the sorts of questions you get. You ask why why will it converge? Will it converge? And well, we just do what we'd usually do. We'd have A R cubed over A is equal to three point three seven five divided by eight 
and this gives the answer of 0 0.421875 cube cube root that answer you get r equal to 0 0.75 so we found the common ratio now if we go back to the other slide a sequence has a sum to infinity if r satisfies the condition of it being less than 1 or bigger than minus and bigger than minus 1 and it's less than 1 and bigger than minus 1 so it must satisfy that condition so therefore the nope therefore the sum to infinity is equal to 8 over 1 minus 0.75 which equals 8 over 0.25 Oops. and that's equal to 32 now in that in the if the question was does the series converge to a limit if so what is this limit you'd say with this the aid of this calculation you say that the sum to infinity is 32 the series does converge because R satisfies the condition of it being less than 1 and bigger than minus 1 and the limit it converges to is 32 and that's a very likely question you'd like to get in an exam paper and that's all for geometric progressions I'll sure, I will be sure to upload some past paper questions because these can be quite tricky at end of paper situations but I hope you get the hang of them for now.